In this week's Swarf and Chips, we're going to be looking at how you can design and manufacture your own products completely competitively in the UK. Today we are at Milton Precision, where they have designed and manufactured their own hands-free dispensing tower. It consists of 57 individual components and we've also got a fantastic cycle time challenge on this particular one. Welcome to this week's Swarf and Chips. We're going to take you through the detail of this build from start to finish by looking at the three core components, the base, the connector and the pedal. First up, we start with the base. So the base is manufactured on the Haas VF2 SS. It's made from rectangular aluminium billet and as you can see, high speed machining with high material removal rates. Look and listen to that swarf flying off. I caught up with development engineer Daniel Rushton who talked me through the rest of this process. So Dan, it was really impressive to see how efficiently you made the base of the tower. Yep. But how do you connect the, the, the base to the tower? Uh, they're connected via this component, the connector, bolted underneath and then through the tube itself. And on what machine and in how many operations does it take to make the connecting part? That component was made in one operation on this Y-axis pass lathe. So we start with a, I think, three and a half inch diameter bar held in our iron book collet chuck. Um, it's turned, drilled, milled, tapped, well, drilled, tapped, uh, and then parted off. So we're going to use that particular component for this week's cycle time challenge. So get your guesses in to guess how long it took to make this particular component. So from this component, we move on to the tower. Okay. How was the tower actually made and on what machine? The tube is manufactured on a Haas ST25C, which uh, we have another Heinbuck collet chuck on. Milled, drilled, tapped, threaded one end, and then turned round drilled and milled and turned on the other end. And any kind of um, problems that you incurred such as distortion? Initially yes, but that was due to us having the chuck pressure up too high. So we dropped that down, perfect work holding again, true as you like. And what about timing of the tube to the, the connecting part? We had to make a timed end cap, uh, a timed end backstop rather so we could make sure that the slot in the tube was aligned to the holes that go through to the connector. Now Dan, moving on to the really complicated bit, yep. you know, the pedals. Um, can, can we go and have a look at that and, and, and to kind of figure out how, you know, what kind of pressure you need to kind of dispense a certain amount of certainly. sanitizer? Yeah, certainly. So we've looked at the manufacture of the base, the connector, the tube. But the yep. most important part is the pedal mechanism. Yep. What obstacles did you overcome with this? Well, it was important to establish the travel of the pedal for how far it pushed up the bottle, because it, the whole thing works on pushing the bottle up rather than you pushing the top of the bottle down. Um, we had to establish how far we needed the bottle to move, and the magic number was 12. It's 12 millimetres, so we had to work out the fulcrum point of the pedal, how long the pedal stuck out from the front of the base, how far from the centre of the tube to be pushing upwards. There was quite a lot of complex maths going on, and this was mainly late at night. <laughs> and, and, and how much sanitizer does it dispense with that 12 mil stroke? It will dispense between I think it's two and five millilitres. It averages about four millilitres, which is exactly the same amount as you'd get if you're pushing the top of the pump down with your hand. Obviously, we're trying to eradicate that. So a lot of maths involved. Now, the pedal itself, 
Dan, yep. there's a few complicated components that are on there. Can you just talk us through some of them components? Yeah, well, we've got the, the, the push pedal itself, the, the part you put your foot on to push down. Uh, we've got the pedal lever, pivot point, the, the little um, ground steel pivot pins, the blocks that they sit into for it to pivot on, and then we've got uh, a clevis pin where we have a joint for transferring that mechanical leverage upwards. And what machines were the, were the pedals made on? Most of the pedal components were made on the um, Haas mills. And it's coming together nicely now. We can yep. see that the parts have also been anodised. Yeah, we're, we're quite fortunate to own our own anodising company. Um, so they go up there and they are, after they are hard anodised, they are PTFE coated. And the PTFE coating stops any muck, germs adhering to the surfaces. And we talk about quality and about making things in the UK. How do you inspect the components? We do it all in-house. We're ISO 9001 registered. So all what comes with that, we inspect everything so ourselves. So it's a top quality UK made product. Now let's move into the assembly department, Dan. Certainly. It's, it's been really nice to see how the sanitizers have been made up internally. Um, and, and all of the internal uh, mechanisms. Now we're kind of seeing the final assembly, Dan. There's a lot more work that goes into these that initially meets the eye. Yeah, yeah, there is. Um, as you look at it as a product, it looks like a base, a tube and a pedal. But like you say, there's a lot more going on behind the scenes. And it's internally. nice to see it without the, the tube on, you know, with the pistons yeah, yeah, and now yeah. it's actuated. Um, and it really kind of highlights that kind of stroke, the 12 mil stroke that you're referring yeah, to. It, it, you can see the engineering inside it, don't you? And I think it really highlights UK manufacturing quality. Yeah, well, we, we pride ourselves on quality. That's what I was, had drummed into me when I first started working at this company. You know, quality is the main thing. Now, we've got to the final, final stage. You're just yep. about to insert the bottle. Yep. Um, show us how it's done. So, you fill it up with sanitizer or soap or whatever you want to put in there. Simply slide it in. We've bored out the tube to suit the bottle exactly. Line the nozzle up with the slot. Well, that's very simple and I certainly like the, the, the end cap, Dan. <laughs> uh, vodka only. Yeah, well, we thought about you guys and that was uh, apparent for you lot. So we're donating this one to you guys at Swarf and Chips. Thank you very much, Dan. It's an absolute pleasure and a pleasure being involved with it today. You're um, just to round up really and summarise, Dan, you know, how important and what message would you give to UK manufacturers out there, you know, in particular that are looking for work? How important is it to think out of the box and to maybe look to design and manufacture your own products? Well, I think if you're going to diversify and make your own product, you've really got to find what you want to make. If there's a gap in the market, there's no point trying to make something for a market that's not there. Um, and make the best quality item you can, because quality. So Dan, it's only been recently that you've been manufacturing these products. Yep. But there's already been some new evolutions. Yeah, I uh, posted it onto the village where I live, their Facebook, community Facebook page. And the first question that popped up was, I see you've done a pedal operated hand sanitizer. How would a wheelchair user use it? Is it wheelchair friendly? And the answer was, we didn't really know. So we took a unit round to the lady's house and had a test in it and realized we needed to make some modifications. And I've had the privilege to, to actually see that modification first yeah, that, and today. That's been going on in the factory today. Um, we've sent some pictures of it to the, the lady and she was more than happy with it and she's going to pop back in tomorrow and, and test it. And we've also had the privilege to see some of these sanitizer units that will be going on to yachts too. Yeah, yeah uh, we've, we've um, done a uh, solid 316, stainless 316 version that is going to be fine for using on super yachts and in a marine environment. Wow, so there you have it, manufacturing a product from scratch, all in-house.
It is often said that necessity is the mother of invention. Managing director Ian Mustard explained to me the importance of diversification in times like these and the sad circumstances which led him to design the hands-free sanitizer. Ian, thanks for having us at Milturn Precision today. Now, Ian, before we start, you know, what do, what do Milturn do? We specialise in optical work, uh, camera lenses in particular. We also do lighting for super yachts and also motorsport production. And during the challenging times that we've all been in, uh, how did this affect your work? All three markets have pretty much come to a standstill. We've pretty much shut down for the last three months on mainstream production, just ticking over, trying to keep the base components coming through as and when they need them. And for you personally, how important is diversification? Oh, it's massive. For the last two years, we've been focusing purely on diversification across the range. We're only too well aware that we're in quite a niche market with all of our products. So to enable us to carry on and future-proof the company, we've been looking at all different markets. Recently, you designed and manufactured your own product from scratch, the hands-free sanitising tower. Now, this has got lots of USPs, but how did this project come about? Sadly, five weeks ago, I lost one month. Um, and it, it, it highlighted many issues of us, that the hand pumps, the electronic ones, it's contact, it's always contact. So we've designed this foot-operated unit with no physical contact apart from the sole of your shoe, dispenses three to five mils every time, all the time. Reliable, robust, absolutely safe for everybody. Now, how important is it for all engineers to be able to, to maybe think out of the box like you have done and start manufacturing their own products here in the UK to sell in the UK and maybe all around the world. I think it's paramount. I think the UK right now needs a good boost and it needs people to start producing back home. We do subcontract so much overseas, not just China, but all overseas. We've got the talent in the UK. Let's capitalise on that and let's use it for what we can moving forward. I've got every faith in machine shops across the UK. What we produce is to a very high standard. The training from on the onset is massive. And then the development as they stay within the company. The quality, all of our materials, our tooling, our machine tools, our staff, our personnel, our supply chain, it's far higher in the UK than most countries. That's it for this week's Swarf and Chips show. Make sure you like, comment and subscribe below. Also, I need to reveal the winner of our double prize giveaway with Granger Guitars. Congratulations to Amy Hall on Facebook. You guessed 83 components. The correct answer was 95 components to make a Granger guitar. Don't forget to keep them spindles turning.